Well, we're back. We received parts. I just came in from out of town. Came home and to my pleasantly surprised um, reaction, the Holly kit came in that I ordered to replace and to update basically, not to replace, but to, re to update our ignition system. But also, I went ahead and bought, because I didn't know when this system was gonna come in. We got a car show coming up in a couple weeks in Salisaw, Oklahoma, and I wanna be able to drive my car to the, to the car show. So, basically, taking, taking from where we left off on the, on the previous video, we did a, a check with our multimeter. I bought this multimeter from O'Reilly's. It's not an expensive one. No, it's not a fluke, those big fancy ones, but it gets the job done. So, where we left off, we checked this coil that's been on the car, and the primary was fine. It was 0.4 on the, I believe on the 200 ohm setting. And that was good, it seemed to be in spec. But when we checked the secondary, we were down to 2.5, and I think it's supposed to be at 0.4 at best, 0.4 on the secondary, and that's on the, the 20K setting on the multimeter. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check, I'm gonna show you guys that just real quick. This just came in from Summit right before I left. Hadn't had a chance to put it on. I just now took it out of the box, right now. And obviously this has a much better reading, although not as much as I would have expected it to. But I'm gonna let you guys tell me what you think. Now, when I compared the secondary on the new sniper coil, this one had a much higher reading on the secondary side than either one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we've got. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to check the secondary on these two. This is the, the original one has been on the car. Let's see if I can get my leads out of the way and untangle here. Okay, so now on our primaries, both of these, we got 0.4. This is the brand new one, 0.4. And then this is the new sniper coil. And this one on the secondary is 0.4. So they all have, they're all consistent on the primary. Now, I wanna show you guys the secondary. Okay, now, here is the one that's been on the car. As you can tell, secondary is at 2.27. Now here's the new one, just came in from Summit, the exact same coil, just except that it's brand new. Just took it out of the box. 3.92, so, I think that's acceptable. When I, I think it can be as low as at 3,500 or 3.5. So I would expect it to have a little bit more than that. Now, look at the new sniper from Holly. Excuse me, let me get this right here. Much higher which is really, I would have rather seen it right around this area here for those two. So, let's see where it rests at. Yeah, 4.88. So there could be a little discrepancy in my, you know, my multimeter, but you can definitely see the differences here. So what I'm gonna do is, I've been wanting to update this whole thing for a long while, regardless of issues I've had. So let me show you the kit that I got. This is obviously just showed you guys the coil. This is the box. If you compare the size, and it's one of the reasons why I bought it because it was black instead of red. This is the harness that the sniper ignition box comes in. And it's designed to work with the HyperSpark and the sniper. But look at this compared to the NSD box that's on it. Much smaller, much smaller. Now we're gonna sit here and look, see where we wanna mount this. Um, 
because I don't want it to, you know, I think getting it too close to that heat obviously would not be good. So what we're gonna look at are what our choices are. If I can get it maybe, you know, a little bit closer to this side, but I still got the coil. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll sit here and think about that. May need to go up here. You know, I, I don't want to drill any more holes than I have to, but you get the idea. And then we ordered, came with this whole set. You know, if you order the whole system, you can order the whole system together with the ignition when you buy the hyper spark. But I kind of grew into this system. This is the harness that we bought that plugs into the sniper. And of course it has relays and everything else. So we're gonna read all our instructions. But here's what I wanna do for testing purposes. We're gonna install, we're gonna go ahead and install the new MSD blaster coil first. So I bought it, I bought this because it was $65. It was worth spending $65. No, I'm not being a parts changer, but I wanna go to the damn car show. So if this, this was worth a gamble to me, because I did not know when the sniper box, it said out of stock or uh, unknown. And then I guess I got lucky and it showed up. So this was gonna go on regardless, okay? This is not throwing parts at it. This is throwing parts at it because I wanna go to the car show. The blaster two coil, yes. I can afford $65. So we're gonna put this on. I'm gonna drive the car. I'm not gonna drive it for 10 minutes and say it fixed it or anything like that. You're gonna see, I'm gonna go get it hooked up, drive it down to the gas station, put fuel in this thing, drive around for a while. I want to know if this was the issue. If this was, then bonus on the new coil that goes with the sniper. Bonus, bonus, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, if this doesn't fix it, am I leery of the MSD box? Don't know. Again, all I can tell you is the car just fired right up. It runs fine when you first start it. It's great until about 10 to 15 minutes of driving it, and then it starts acting up. It starts backfiring through the exhaust. It loses power. It just, it is, it lets you know it is not happy. So stay tuned. We're gonna get this on and I'm gonna let you know what happens. Okay, it's probably about two hours later now and I can probably say or officially say after that two hours, we think it's fixed. I'm pretty sure I know it's fixed. So, uh, went out driving around, of course, you know, as the normal first 10, 15 minutes would be okay, but then you'd start noticing the surge and then it would progressively get worse. It wouldn't even wanna go up the hills without backfiring and you'd barely make it home. So, after driving around for, I'd say at least, I even wanna got a haircut. <laughs> so, going up these hills, I put it in overdrive on the Trey Mac. And again, we live in the lower Ozarks in the, I guess they call it the lower Boston's, lower Boston mountains. And some pretty steep hills up here, uh, going, up, going up the hills and the little highways and everything. I lugged this thing down into overdrive and it was turning like maybe 1500 RPM and I made it climb the hills in overdrive. Climb right up the hills in overdrive, lugging it. Of course, it was probably not happy about it, but I thought I was stupid, but I was just trying to get it to fail. I was trying to load the ignition system as much as possible. It's, it's fantastic. Took it out on the highway, did some, uh, I guess from 65, third gear drops down into fourth and fifth, and it is magnificent, magnificent. Got fuel, like I said, and I pulled a plug, and even the plug, I have not touched this plug until, you know, I was messing with the EFI when I thought the EFI was an issue. It's cleaning itself off. I mean, it is literally cleaning itself off. Now, I need to go back to wide open throttle setting on the timing, because it's got a little too much. So I'm gonna back it up just a little bit, uh, probably about a degree or two, creep up, get my strap, my mark back where it needs to be. But the plug is literally cleaning itself up. We've got spark, <laughs> we've got spark. So I am elated. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this. I personally have never had a coil go bad on me. 
Now, I know many of you have, and uh, I think of the few times I've been lucky, I've just been lucky on a coil. So here are the symptoms of what this bad coil did for me. And it did it over a slow, it did it over probably a two to three week period. So going back to Bristow earlier this year, we cruised it for hours. And I noticed the more I drove it, it was ever so slight, but I had a slight surge, just barely. You could hardly tell, but it ran fine. It ran great. Just had a little bit of a surge. Fast forward to driving around here. We go to this car show uh, about a month ago and started noticing that it was getting a little sluggish and it would even backfire a little bit, but it was you know, for the most part, during that cruise for two, three hours, it was fine, but we started noticing it getting worse driving home and then going up the hills, especially. I had assumed we had a fuel pump issue. No, I didn't have a fuel pressure gauge. Yes, I should have a fuel pressure gauge in it. I made the stupid assumption. You know what happens when we assume? Put a fuel pump in it, a bigger fuel pump in it. Didn't make a difference changed all kinds of things on this thing. Um, everybody knows we've been having issues with the charging system, keeping up with the fans, but it got progressively worse. We changed the O2 sensor. The O2 sensor looked fouled and it was. It was black and thought that had to be it. Put a new O2 sensor in it, did the same thing. After about 15 minutes, it, it would get worse. And it actually, it got to where it didn't even take 15 minutes. It took maybe 10 minutes as it would just, it seems like those durations shortened up. So I was chasing, you know, plug issues, being fouled. Oh, well, I'm going to say probably a weak spark contributed to a lot of that because this thing is definitely cleaning up. It looks a little bit richer, but I'm really not going to change too many of the settings so I can drive it and see. I do have a little bit too much timing in it, like I said before. That's easy, I've already made the adjustment, but I'll check that later. It seems like it starts faster. So all those things, I will say, when you have, and it was using a ton of fuel. I mean, it was it was going through fuel, obviously by the way you look at the spark plugs, it would burn your eyeballs in here, even after it was warmed up. So I'd say after all those things on the coil for the symptoms, I'm gonna say, uh, which you read about, it's obvious, you know, looked it up. Uh, sluggish performance, backfiring through the exhaust, um, tons of your, your fuel mileage going way down. It's hard to tell in fuel mileage on one of these old big block cars and you know, you got it stroked and everything else. They're never gonna get spectacular fuel mileage like in newer cars, but you know, it, it's kind of hard to gauge that. But I did notice it was using a lot more fuel. Um, it burned our eyeballs, like I said. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my experience with bad cool. Finally, now I can put that in my my toolbox and for symptoms. Again, I should have known, but it's a it's a learning process. So yeah, folks, in th in this coil, I'm gonna say this coil to me shouldn't have gone out that fast. This coil is not that old. Uh, well, I say it is. It's 12 years old. So maybe maybe I guess after 12 years it would go bad. I wouldn't think so. But here's what we're going to do on the new system. Because it's running so well and it's fixed for now for what's going on there, we're going to go ahead and leave well enough alone so we can do a car show here in a couple weeks over in Salisaw, Oklahoma. It's a pretty big one. So we're going to leave well enough alone so we can get the car cleaned up, go enjoy, see our friends, have a great time. This will go on though. This is going on. This new sniper box coil. This coil seems to be a lot stronger, has a lot more resistance on the secondary. The new harness, gonna try to clean it up, make it look better because we got an AC system we're gonna be putting on this thing pretty soon. Our CBF charging system. I'm, I'm done with the Chrysler alternator for this thing. Chrysler alternator is great for a factory setup. No pump, uh, yeah, no fuel pumps, no fans. And then I'm gonna have people tell me that I don't know what I'm doing, and yeah, they work just fine. Well, they don't for me. So I'm tired of throwing alternators, Mopar alternators at it. So this is the CBF 
conversion kit, and you can grow into this because CBF is going to be providing our conversion brackets and everything up for the uh, AC system. This is going to go on also during the late fall, early winter in between our customer projects because we've got to get back on Glenn's Pontiac 350 Stroker and Kevin's Dart. Those guys have been waiting patiently, and uh, I just had to get my own car back to where it needed to be, but we got some parts coming for the Pontiac, and the Dart's just about done. So, yeah, this is going to be going on uh, this winter, and hopefully this will make an improvement. Um, that coil, you know, maybe that coil went out prematurely because of the crappy charging system that's on this car. I, I would not doubt it. would not doubt it at all. So, yeah. So I hope somebody got something out of this, out of uh, coil symptoms and how a coil can start the symptoms you would see if it starts failing. I've definitely learned something on this after throwing other parts at it. But, you know, you look at the, the O2 sensor, I'm glad we did change it now because it was so fouled out. It, it probably would have cleaned itself off. I don't know. But now I have an extra O2 sensor. You know, we've got a couple O2 sensors on the test stand. Uh, so I've always got a backup now. So, yeah. Happy Saturday, everybody. I think now I'm going to I'm gonna party it up, man. I'm going to sit here and later on maybe get some wine and sit out here and um, look at the cars and have a good day. So, hope everybody got something out of this. Enjoy your Saturday, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for watching.